No matter what women say, they live to be objectified. I don't want to fuck your degree. What else can you offer me besides sex? I don't want to fuck your personality either. Women want all the accolades of being the boss without any of the responsibilities. Live from Philadelphia, your man, Donovan Sharp. What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and welcome to the 398th edition of TSR Live, your daily dose of Red Bull truth, wisdom, and awareness. Looks like I've got to move my camera down a little bit, and I also have to adjust the lighting. So give me just a quick second here. Give me uh oh, okay, wait a minute. Hang on, guys. There we go. Much better. Much better. Little uh, little production thing there. It is Thursday, January 24th, 2019. We are multicasting live to three YouTube channels, three Facebook pages, as well as Twitter. Until, of course, my internet goes out on me. I actually did a test this morning. And everything seemed to be, everything seemed to be all right. Things seem to be working out a little bit better. The light is nice and green. We'll see if that sustains. If not, it is what it is. Um, they're supposed to be coming back out here soon. Anyway, like I said, we're multicasting to seven different platforms. So it is all good. Let's get right to it. Last Sunday, the L.A. Rams beat the New Orleans Saints 26-23 in overtime on the strength of Greg the Leg, Zerline's 57-yard field goal. But all anyone is talking about is the missed pass interference call toward the end of regulation. Now, the significance of that missed call is that it would have given the Saints a first and goal from about the five-yard line, at which point they would have likely scored a touchdown, put the Saints in full control, forcing the Rams to score a touchdown to tie the game late. Instead, the Saints were forced to attempt a field goal, which gave them a three-point lead, at which point the Rams marched down the field, Kick the game, tying field goal, sending the game in overtime, and we all know what happened after that. So now the Saints fans are outraged. They're buying billboards. They're starting petitions to have the game replayed. I think a few season ticket holders have sued the NFL for the blown call. Michael Thomas is calling Super Bowl 53 Super Bowl lie. It's been one giant shit show. Now we can make fun of Saints fans and Saints players for still crying four full days after the game. But let's rewind back to Sunday to the blown call. Sean Payton, the Saints head coach, did exactly what we would expect a head coach to do after a blown call, which was turn red, chase the line judge up and down the field, demanding an explanation for the missed call. Okay, fair enough. This is what happens. It was clearly a missed pass interference call. Payton's going to be mad. But if you watched the rest of the game after the missed call, it was clear that Sean Payton was not over that call. A lot of coaches get robbed. A lot of coaches are upset about missed calls. 99 and a half times out of 100, life goes on. Yeah, they're still a little bit steamed about it, but they understand that they have a game to coach. So they forget about it and they move on. Sean Payton did not do that. You could see that Peyton was still red. He was still following the line judge. He was still demanding an explanation for the missed call, even though there was nothing he could do about it at that point. The reason that is significant is because Sean Peyton not getting over that call clearly affected his coaching and, more importantly, his team. 
You could still see Saints players on the sidelines bitching about the call, even though they had won the coin toss in overtime and had the ball first. They score a touchdown, and they're in Super Bowl 53. Instead, Sean Payton, who is still clearly rattled by the missed call, decides to throw the football on first down, rather than running the football, which, don't get it twisted, that that was the strength of the Saints this season. You've got Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram. That is as good a one-two punch dynamic duo as it gets. Instead of doing what got them to the NFC title game, Sean Payton loses his head, calls up, calls a pass play on first down, Drew Brees throws an interception, the Rams get the ball back and kick the game-winning field goal. Now, Let's ask ourselves this, had that pass interference call, had that pass interference had been called, would the Saints have won? Maybe, maybe not. But I do know, what I do know is that because Sean Payton did not charge it to the game, it negatively affected him, his team, and his play calling. Had he forgotten about it and just kept a level head, maybe the outcome would be different. I know one thing, his team certainly would have played differently. But because he continued to bitch and moan and sulk about something he had no control over any longer, it contributed to them ultimately losing the NFC Championship game. As men, we have to understand that there are many things that are outside of our control. Our genetics, what people say, what people do and feel, and so on and so forth. We also know that the difference between an excuse and a reason is that an excuse usually contains something you have control over. Reasons are things you generally do not. For example, why are you late, Donovan? Uh, my alarm clock didn't go off. Um, the sun didn't come up. Those are excuses. Why were you Why were you late, Donovan? I got T-boned at an intersection eight blocks from work. That's a reason. That said, there are things that happen to us, even though we had an element of control over the situation to some extent. Just because, listen, again, guys, just because you do everything right does not mean everything is going to go right. There is no better example of this inaction than with your interactions with women. You could run airtight game on a woman you approached at the club or the bar, and she might tell you, peace out. You could thoroughly vet a woman and train her properly. She still might do you dirty. It happens, guys. That's the game. So what do you do when things like this happen? You charge it to the game. Your girl fucks you over, charge it to the game and make sure it doesn't happen again. You get fucked over on a pass interference call, you charge it to the game and make sure you're not in that position next time, right? Sean Payton? Now, some of you are probably thinking, all right, what does charge it to the game mean? Well, it's simple. Charge it to the game means understanding that what's done is done. It cannot be changed. There is nothing more that you can do. So you put it behind you. You don't beat yourself up about it. You go back to the drawing board and make the changes necessary for a better outcome next time. That's it. It's as simple as that. Some things are easier to charge to the game than others, right? Okay, so you took a girl out on a date. You made a few mistakes. You paid 80 bucks on a tab. Eh, okay. That's relatively easy to charge it to the game if, of course, you know the game. Getting a hose in the NFC title game? Not so easy to charge to the to, to charge to the game. But guess what, gentlemen? It still has to be done. Sean Payton let his team down because he didn't charge it to the game. Did he get fucked over? Absolutely. Did it cost the Saints the game? I don't know, but I know that what did cost the Saints the game was not charging it to the game. What was Sean Payton going to do? Bitch and moan? What did he expect the referees to do? All right, Sean, everybody stop. Right now, everybody stop. Pass interference, number 26 or whatever, defense, we're going to take the ball from the Rams, okay? We're going to place the ball on the five-yard line, first and goal. Guess what? Not going to happen. What's done is done. It's over. There are many, many things 
that men need to forget about and just charge to the game. And tonight, I'm going to point out the five most important things that men need to charge to the game when it comes to girls. My opening rant is brought to you by Good Vibes CBD Oil. Good Vibes will not only drastically reduce your anxiety symptoms, you will also get some of the best sleep you have ever had. If you want to support the show and get your hands on the best and most effective CBD oil around, go to DonovanSharp.com and buy it through my affiliate link. Use promo code Donovan15 to get a 15% discount. Again, that is Donovan15, Donovan15 to get 15% off. No phone calls tonight, guys. No phone calls. Put all of your questions in the chat. Follow, add, and like me on Facebook and Twitter. Just add Don, Just search for Donovan Sharp on either platform. If you want access to all of my content, go to patreon.com forward slash Donovan Sharp. There you will find the entire archive of all complete episodes of TSR Live, both audio and video. So you can either listen on the go or watch at your leisure. You can watch my show Monday through Thursday afternoons at 5 Eastern. But if you want to be able to rewatch or re-listen to the episodes in their entirety, less than 17 cents a day is all it takes. Be sure to subscribe to my weekly newsletter to stay in the know on all things Donovan Sharp. Being on my email list also comes in handy in the event that I get deplatformed here or anywhere else. Not going to blow up your inbox, guys, so do not worry about that. But if you do not want to miss anything, subscribe to the weekly TSR newsletter. If you like what you hear, if you get something out of my content and you would like to contribute, you can do that through my Streamlabs link. www.streamlabs.com forward slash Donovan Sharp 1. That's www.streamlabs.com forward slash Donovan Sharp and the number 1. 100% of your contributions comes directly to the towers as opposed to 30% via Super Chat. All right, let's go to the chat for the first time and see who's in the house. Ryan Sullivan pops the cherry. Hellfighter gets the sloppy seconds. Rob Cruz thinks he was first. He's fucking her in the ass. And Luigi Conti is getting it all on video. Mo the Genesis, Mike Shinnery, Lorenzo Davis. Chase Rubidoux, shout out to all of you. JC, Pine's the word in the house. That would be Pine, the keto, a.k.a. carnivore diet expert. Cassive, don't think I've ever seen you in here. Good to see you in here. Hellfighter said, what a show yesterday. Yeah, listen, it was a great show. Oh, hang on. Oh, no, go back. As you guys can see, I've been preoccupied with other projects. And the reason why you can tell I've been a little bit preoccupied is because my <laughs> I'm tripping all over myself. I'm tripping all over myself with my uh, with my production. Oh, wait a minute. Can't have that. So just bear with me. We'll get through this. It'll be all good. That's just a bad picture to have up right now. Fuck it. I'll fix it later. I am a not I am a notorious perfectionist when it comes to the production of my show. This obviously is no different. You know what? I'm going to leave that picture up there. That'll work. Let's continue. Thaddeus Scott is in the house. I am Alpha. Good to see you in here. Wizard Prang is in the house. Hellfighter says, no hairline too. I don't know what it is about black people and hairlines. Like, some dude tried to troll me in the Redman group. He was like, let's talk about Donovan's hairline. I'm like, like, my hairline is solid. Like, I don't, like, I'm not balding. Like, I don't have a receding hairline. I just don't understand. I mean, even if I did, what am I supposed to do? Like, 
you know, run away and hide. Like, listen, listen, man, I didn't grow up in the black community. I grew up on military bases. Please, somebody explain to me why niggas like to make such a big deal about another nigga's hairline. Is that, I mean, is that supposed to be like, I'm not saying that you did, Hellfighter, but would Pete, I mean, is that, I don't know, is that a, I don't know. Like, I used to get that a lot in the, in, um, I got that on the Redman group and then on the Brother Pill. I got it a couple of times when I shaved my head. They're like, ah, Donovan's hairline, blah, 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 ha, ha, ha. And these, these, of course, are the trolls, the niggas who hate me. But I'm like, dude, why? I don't understand what the big deal about a hairline is. Like, I have a hairline, no big deal. I don't know. I don't know. Heathen Deluxe, back for the first time in a while, says the Saints were robbed. No, the Saints were beaten. But what a lot of people don't seem to realize is that the L.A. Rams were also robbed when Jared Goff was face masked, maybe three yards from the end zone. The refs didn't call that. You don't hear anybody. Listen, you didn't see anybody on the L.A. sidelines bitching and moaning. Yes, the missed pass interference call was much more egregious. But if the Rams get the ball first and goal, then the game is even different, even more different at that point. No, no, the Saints weren't robbed. The Saints robbed themselves. It was, it was Listen, it was a very bad no call. Thaddeus Scott said, kind of like deflate gate. You know what? I'll, I will disagree with your premise because I think you're making this too, bi too big of a deal. This is actually exactly like, de um, this is exactly like deflate gate in that deflate gate was no big fucking deal. You guys have to understand when Tom Brady deflated the football, I think the Patriots already had like a four touchdown lead on the Colts. The game was already in hand. Big deal. And by the way, by the way, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Patriots went back to the Super Bowl when he was suspended those first four games. Didn't seem to didn't seem to matter one way or the other. Kyle Mitchell is in the house. Yes, Hellfighter says they got emotional. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hornswoggler, good to see you in here. Captain Crunch 420 says, what's up, fellas? Can't chat. Commuting home. Remind you of Murphy's Law. Yeah, Murphy's Law only applies to the Cleveland Browns. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong if you are the Cleveland, Bound, the Cleveland Browns. Hellfighter says, when you accept life, that's when your life changes for the better equals charge to the game. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Ryan Sullivan says, I just saved my monitor from falling over. Okay. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Kyle said he was going to call in. Eh. Yep. Charles Caballero says uh, Tom Brady did that. Yeah. It was 28 to 3. Before the ball was deflated. The only reason why people made such a big deal about deflate gate is because it was Tom Brady. That's all. And by the way, by the way, <laughs> and, and the interesting thing is, is that like Miami J hates Tom Brady, right? But if Miami J were to see Tom Brady, he would be the, he would ask for his autograph. Why? Because he knows Brady's great. Yes. He quote hates Tom. Tom Brady. Dude, listen, back in the back in the early to mid 90s, I hated Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith, and Michael Irvin. I really did. I was a teenager, the Eagles sucked, and the Cowboys were running three Super Bowls in four years. But a funny thing happened on the way to maturity. I began to realize that people who resent success, people who hate on successful people, people who try to disqualify clear success are people who will never be successful. Think about anyone who is worth seven figures, right? Even if you're worth a million five, you think anybody who's worth seven figures got to be successful in some way or any self-made, any successful individual, any super successful individual, uh, you know, you know, pick a name. Do you think Warren Buffett hates Tom Brady? No, of course not. He doesn't hate Tom Brady. He respects him because Brady is great. He respects Bill Belichick, right? Think of a think of any and guys, help me out in the chat here. Help me out in the chat. 
if the um, think of any uh, super successful person who is from Miami, New York, or Buffalo. <laughs> Anyone think of any celebrity, any 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 super successful person, person worth seven figures, eight nine figures, from Miami, Buffalo, or the state of New York, right? Like, think of anyone from there. Who is from Miami? Um, shit, man. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that even though uh, Bradley Cooper, huge Eagles fan, huge Eagles fan, right? He's, I mean, you know, see, you know, see him all around town. You see, you see them, you see them all around. You know, you see Bradley Cooper all around town. He's an Eagles fan. Do you think Brad Cooper hates Tom Brady? Do you think Bradley Cooper hated Tom Brady after Super Bowl 39 when the Patriots beat the Eagles? No, of course not. Brady had just won his third Super Bowl. He, quote, hates the Patriots, but guess what? Successful people don't hate success. People who want to be successful don't hate on successful people. So, there, perfect, Lorenzo Davis, boom. Somebody time out Nareem Truth. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Fuck you, you're out of here. Fuck you, you're gone. Go somewhere else. Never seen you in here before. You're already starting to cause trouble. Get the fuck out of here. Fuck off. Fuck off. Eat a dick. Like seriously, I'm not. I'm not, I, like honestly, man. Like I'm not here for the bullshit. The fuck out of here. Doesn't look like it. I could I, honestly, I couldn't give less of a fuck about you and those like you. This guy, Nareem Detruth, hates Tom Brady. Truly hates Tom Brady. And newsflash to anybody out there. Who really and truly does? Who really and truly does hate Tom Brady? Who hates guys like me? Who hates Rolo Tomasi? Anyone who's successful, like this dumb nigga Nareem to Truth, y'all are never going to be successful because you resent success. I heard some guy at the gym the other day had a Redskins hat on. Yeah, you know we go into a nice Super Bowl, but does that make him the greatest of all time? In my opinion, no. Really, nigga? For real? <laughs> dude is going to nine Super Bowls, bruh. Like, dude, you haven't lost nine pounds since you joined this gym. Tom Brady's in his ninth Super Bowl. You're going to say, eh, not in my opinion. Yeah, that guy never going to be successful. If you resent success, if you hate on success, you will never be successful. If you're the money is the root of all evil guy, if you're, <gasps> you shouldn't be making that much money, guess what? You're never going to make money. If you resent money, you're never going to make money. That's just how it is. That's just how it is. Yeah, no phone lines today, guys. No phone lines today. Thaddeus Scott says, who can hate Rolo besides chicks? Dude, Rolo, listen, Rolo has more male haters than female haters. I have more male haters than, than female haters. Not one successful person on this earth talks shit about other successful people. That's it. So, let us go ahead and get this party started. I'm going to give you guys five things that men need to charge to the game with regards to women. Number one, she cheated on me. Fuck women, they suck. Dudes get mad and butt hurt when girls cheat on them. And listen, who can blame them? When a woman betrays you by fucking someone else while she's your girl, it is a painful experience. I speak from personal experience. She could have cheated with her ex. Could have cheated with her boss. A dude she met at a club on Girls Night Out. A dude on Facebook. I mean, it could be anybody for... Any reason. All right, I'm deleting the call-in number so you guys can stop freaking out. But men need to understand that women are always looking to upgrade. Depending upon their sexual market value, they've always got plenty of options. This way, of course, to reduce the odds of this happening to you is to keep yourself as high value as possible. Stay fit, run red pill games, stack paper, and execute your plan to become a better man all around. Even then... Your girl might still cheat, and there's nothing you can do about it. Women cheat for many reasons. Whether those reasons are legit or not, 
Doesn't matter. If your girl wants to cheat, she gon' cheat. Listen, I know everything Devin does. At least I think I do, right? Keylogger on all of her devices. Um, you know, GPS, all that stuff. Total transparency. If Devin wanted to cheat, she could do it quite easily, and I'd be none the wiser. Let's keep it 100. This is this is just how it is. That's the game. That's not fair, Donovan. Maybe, maybe not. Either way, you need to charge it to the game. The sexual marketplace isn't fair, and that's all there is to it, guys. But attempting to get revenge on women, and I've done this before, will not only blow up in your face, which has happened to me before, it makes the pain and embarrassment much worse. Again, I speak from personal experience. I've, done, I've tried to do some fucked up revenge type shit. Sometimes I'm successful, sometimes not so much. Charge it to the game and make sure it doesn't happen again. Set boundaries for your girl. Monitor her social media. Be territorial rather than jealous or insecure. Make her give you her phone when you ask for it. And again, this isn't fuck buddies or, or friends with benefits. We're talking about the woman who has gone through the gauntlet that is your training, who is now your main chick, girlfriend, wife, whatever you want to call her. This is what you have to do. Do the things necessary to reduce the odds of getting cheated on. But understand that it could still happen. It sucks. It's not fair. But again, there's nothing you can do about it. At least after it happens. So charge it to the game. Move on with your life. If you are watching on Facebook, Twitter, or one of my backup YouTube channels, come on over to my main channel to watch the rest of the show. Search for Donovan Sharp on YouTube. And the first channel you see with my face as the logo is the channel you should come to and subscribe to. Again, if you're watching on Facebook, Twitter, or one of my backup YouTube channels, come to my main YouTube channel to watch the rest of the episode. Let me check the chat here one more time. Yeah, Naruth, Nareem, the truth. Ay, ay, ay. This is why, and this is a weakness of mine. I give these trolls way too much run. But people who troll me will never be successful. That's one thing. That is one thing I know that I can take. I, I take personal satisfaction in knowing unequivocally beyond the shadow of any and all doubt that the men and women who troll me will never, ever, ever, ever be successful. Ever. They're not going to be successful. They're fucking losers and they know it. They know it. Shout out to HS Lee, 169, for the $5. To watch or listen to the rest of this episode, go to DonovanSharp.com. Thanks for watching.